Hello, thanks for inviting me to contribute to the Candidates and Issues Forum. My name is Kale Weston, and I'm running to represent Utah's 2nd Congressional District in the House of Representatives. So I was a teacher and a writer. Um, I also had the great privilege, but also challenge of representing our government when I was with the State Department for almost 11 years. Seven of those years were in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the big takeaway uh, from my time in a tough city like Fallujah or Helmand province in southern Afghanistan or the easternmost mountainous region of Afghanistan was that bad policy and bad policy making and policy makers or leaders can, can, can hurt people, can literally uh, get us killed. Uh, we saw that with the war in Iraq and unfortunately we're seeing it with COVID. So the two key themes that I let off with still hold. Being better neighbors and country over party. I think what COVID has shown, particularly in, in communities of color and those who are most vulnerable to failed policies, is that when, again, those failures happen, not everyone is affected equally. Uh, single working uh, mothers are affected more dramatically. Uh, people who can't Zoom to work are affected more dramatically. So COVID has shown we really should be looking out for our neighbors, especially on an issue as important as healthcare. Um, country over party, self-explanatory, I do not believe in putting any party issues ahead of what's in our national interest, and I think uh, my biography really speaks to that. I think the communities represented by the APAPA and its allied organizations have a lot of the same concerns as working people and small business owners everywhere. So I just want to briefly tell you about some of my priorities. We're all worried about jobs and the economy. So let's talk about how Congress can help the economy get back on its feet. First, we have to get this coronavirus under control. Restaurants and tour buses, for example, aren't going to be profitable again until customers feel safe and in closed spaces regardless of what the government allows. So we need to do what the Trump administration failed to do back in March and April. Improve our testing capacity, develop test and trace programs, implement a nationwide mask mandate and make plans for the production and distribution of a vaccine so we're ready when we finally have one. Second, we have to address the immediate crisis facing so many families across America and here in Utah. Jobs that have disappeared, parents who can no longer work out of the home because their children can't go back to school, millions of people facing evictions and food insecurity. The Democrats in the House of Representatives have passed many bills that would provide emergency assistance to millions of Americans on the verge of catastrophe, but Republicans in the Senate have blocked them. We have to get those bills passed and back on the president's desk so that people can get the help they need. And we need to provide support to small businesses that are struggling because of the pandemic. The Paycheck Protection Program that was part of the CARES Act back in March was some help, but it was never enough. And now the Republicans have allowed it to expire and they've blocked bills like the HEROES Act. Third, we have to build the economy for the 21st century. This means developing new energy technologies, solar and wind, that will create new jobs and help move us away from dirty fuels that give us toxic air. And it means putting people to work, rebuilding our crumbling streets and bridges and water pipes and electrical grids and cleaning up the Jordan River and a thousand other projects that we've put off for far too long. We also need to fix our health care system. The Affordable Care Act, which my opponent voted more than 40 times to repeal, made health care available to tens of thousands of Utahns and millions of Americans who were previously uncovered, but there are still a lot of problems with our health care system. We still have people losing their homes and their life savings because of a cancer diagnosis or a crippling accident, and that just shouldn't happen in the United States. We have to get health care costs under control and move away from employer-based coverage that leaves millions of Americans without insurance and puts a huge burden on small businesses. The way to do that is not to abolish private insurance, but to let people of any age opt into Medicare. That way, private insurance companies will have honest competition and an incentive to bring down out-of-pocket costs to patients. Climate change and air quality issues are also top priorities for me. Much of the population of CD2 lives on the Salt Lake Valley floor, where we have some of the worst air on earth during winter inversions and during summer and fall fire season. This has consequences for our health, our quality of life, and our economy. 
Scientists predict that the effects of climate change will be even more dire in the years to come. What can we do about it? We can start by recommitting the U.S. to the Paris Accords that President Trump pulled us out of and working toward a carbon neutral economy. Utah's second congressional district already has over 13,000 clean energy jobs and nearly $3 billion invested in solar and wind energy, which produces enough electricity to power 270,000 plus homes. We should provide tax incentives and subsidies to dramatically expand this renewable energy capacity and to make our homes and businesses and cars more efficient so we use less energy in the first place. With all the crises facing our nation, the issue of immigration has fallen out of focus a bit, but it remains very important to me. If you elect me to represent you, I will fight to make sure that dreamers are granted a path to citizenship and to end the inhumane separation of families at the nation's borders. And I will work toward finding long-term solutions to the problems plaguing our immigration policy that are both compassionate and economically sensible. Last but not least, there are a couple of issues in the district that I'd like to speak to, which I think are very important. Uh, when I'm traveling throughout the district with our team, one of the places I like to focus on is Topaz, just outside Delta. I think it's very important as someone running to represent a district of 700,000 people that I fully acknowledge and that we discuss the scar tissue of our country's history when it comes to race issues. World War II led to the internment of Japanese American citizens and our team has actually captured drone footage as well as photography, both at the museum and that location. I believe that's important. Secondly, I have not just talked about these things, I've actually, as a candidate, been in a small town in rural Utah called Escalani on Juneteenth. There we were in protests uh, around us were some trucks with Trump flags. So that again, talk is cheap. I think political talk uh, is especially cheap. And if you're interested in learning more about me, I have quite a, a large written archive of op-eds I have written uh, for the Salt Lake Tribune, but also for national papers like the New York Times. There's one final issue I would put out there, is, which is to try and get money out of politics as much as we can. If there's one thing after 10 months running to represent you that I've learned is, is we need to get uh, the system so that if someone's a firefighter or a teacher or a nurse or a laborer, my first job was at Dairy Queen, and I clean public toilets in a city park for three summers. We need to get people in government who reflect the lived experience in CD2. Then I think we're gonna get better jobs. I'm proud to say we have an Amazon delivery truck driver who donates to us and we have people who are unemployed who donate. Um, but I'm running in order to change that model. We need to get to a point where people do not choose to stay out of public service because they're told it's going to cost too much. So thank you again for your time. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me and my team. I'm very accessible. My email is kaeel at westonforcongress.com. Yeah, I hope this is the beginning of a conversation and I look forward to making sure that we're talking about these issues uh, if I'm fortunate enough to represent you. And thanks for doing all of the work that you're doing on your own. Uh, these are not issues that will be solved by any one politician, but working together, I think we can make real progress. And uh, thanks again.